Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 1998, it's a Jeep Grand Cherokee with a 5.2 liter engine and we're going to be replacing the water pump with a new one. You need a special tool to take the water pump off because as you can see the pulley has a very large like a one and a quarter inch uh, nut on it and I'm going to show you a trick that I do to get the water pump um, fan off without um, without any problem. It comes right off. I'll show you a trick that I do. What I do is I just take the, uh, the tool that fits onto the water pump. It fits right onto the, to the nut on the top of the water pump. And the pump is loose itself, but what I normally do, just to make it a little bit easier, is to just take a, any kind of pry bar or a large screwdriver and just put it in between the fan, down between the fan and the pulley, and just wedge it in there, just like that, behind the uh, uh, behind it, and then put your wrench onto here, and I'll show you how easy it comes off. You just fit it. It's a left hand removal with left rotation. And you just hit it a few times and it comes right off. That's it. Comes right out. See? Breaks loose nice and easy. So what you can do is it just turns right out. You can take your pry bar back out, and then we just rotate the fan off of the water pump itself. Um, be careful when you take the pump off, you don't want it to fall and damage the radiator. Uh, you're going to take out the water pump uh, shroud, I'm sorry, the, you're going to take out the water pump fan the, and you're also going to take the shroud out as an assembly because you can't take one out without the other. I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on the top of the shroud here and right on the shroud over here. So we'll just take those out and we're going to remove the fan, sh the fan shroud and the fan as an assembly. As you can see, this now leaves you a considerable amount of room to get that water pump out of there. So I'm going to show you uh, exactly how to do that. First thing you want to do is you want to uh, drain your cooling system out. And the way you're going to accomplish that is you can either loosen up the, the valve down at the bottom of the radiator, which is... underneath over here. You'll see it right there. You can open that up and drain it out there. Or you can just put a bucket down underneath it and pull the low radiator hose off the pump, which is right here. Which is right here. You can just take that clamp off and let the antifreeze drain into a bucket. Uh, that's personal preference. Then what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect all of the bolts that you can see on the water pump itself and uh, remove 
this tube right here. We're going to unbolt this and pull the tube out. And I'll show you how it goes. This is what I'm doing. I just unscrew the lower radiator hose from the water pump. And you can drain it out right through here into a bucket. And you want to catch that handy freeze because if you're going to be reusing it, That's it. I'm going to disconnect this bolt right here first and take this tube out because we need to reuse this tube. So uh, it looks like about a 14 or a 15 millimeter. And you can take that one totally out. In order to get this tube to move out of here, we're going to need to take the tube off on the back of the valve cover right over here. There's a little, probably a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt right down here. We'll take that 10 millimeter bolt out and uh, we should be able to pull that tube right out. We just pull this out of the way and we'll be putting this back on later on. I'm going to just take out this 10 millimeter right here. Comes out. And you're going to unscrew that. And we're going to take that tube and disconnect it. We're just going to unscrew this clamp right here. Okay, and once that's loosened up, you can just slide that back a little bit. Just give it a little bit of a twist, get on there with a pair of pliers. Twist it a little bit just to loosen the, the hose a little bit. And then we can take this hose off the tube, disconnect that hose like that. And now this tube should be loose, so we should be able to get it to move in the water pump and pry it up and out of the way. If we just rock it back and forth, I'm going to put this camera down for a second and use two hands on this. tube it comes right out but there also is an, an o-ring on here that we're going to need to replace so we need to reuse this tube so put on a put on the side and hold on to it and then we're going to unbolt the rest of the water pump and the way we're going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect down underneath here, you see this hose clamp right here. We need to take that hose clamp off because that goes into the uh, into the engine. So we can just loosen that clamp. Make sure you loosen it up fairly, not until it pops apart, but pretty loose.
you can see that hose already is starting. Whoops. Starting to pry off already. Now what we'll do before we go any further, we're going to take out these bolts on the water pump. As you can see, now, down underneath the water pump here, this actually is a bolt right here that we need to take out too. And there's one on the opposite side down over here that we need to take out also right down here. And then the pump should be ready to come off. So I'm going to put the camera down. I'll show you how it's done. As you'll notice, some of the bolts are longer, some are shorter. Just remember when you take them out. Okay. And once you've got once you've got all your bolts out, you can just pretty much get in here with a hammer, tap it a couple of times, and the pump comes right out. And then we're just going to disconnect this hose and then we'll clean it up. I'll show you how to do that. Be careful when you take this out. You don't want to damage the radiator. So I'm going to, we're going to pry that off right there. And then all comes with water pump. Okay. Now what you need to do is we need to clean up the surface where the water pump is going to mount to. We have to clean off all of these, this part of the gasket that's remaining on here. And the way you can do that is you can do it with a scraper or if you can use a, a disc that can go onto a drill and it has to be an aluminum, uh, made for aluminum because you don't want to damage, you don't want to damage this part of the, uh, the timing cover because the water pump has got to mount back onto it. So let me clean it up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, and this is what it's going to look like after you you clean up the surface where it's, it's going to mount. Nice and clean. Make sure all of the gasket particles are all missing. And then what we're going to do is take the new water pump and the gasket itself on the water pump, what I normally do is instead of just leaving the gasket lay on there, I put a little bit of uh, an adhesive to hold the gasket in place. I just put it on very sparingly. This will keep the gasket from moving when you're trying to set the water pump in position. So what I normally do is put this on. Let's stick it down a little bit. What I normally do is just put the put the bolts back in it for just for a little while till the till the adhesive starts to uh, to set up. And we'll let it dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back to it in just a minute. Okay, now that the glue dried, 
and the adhesive is holding the gasket in place. We just take all these bolts out of here, and we're going to put a very thin bead of uh, silicone on this. I'll show you how that goes. thin bead in there is because in here you'll see on the uh, water pump itself you'll see like a little bit of like a, a pinning right inside this area right over here so we just put a little bit of silicone on just to fill in those areas right there so now once we put a little bit of silicone on there not a lot just a little bit very sparingly and we put the pump back together what we're going to do is we're going to stick the pump inside here and we're going to catch that hose up in the top right here first and then we'll bolt it back on so let me put the camera down and I'll show you how I'm going to do it okay now that we got all the bolts caught in there we're just going to make sure everything is nice and tight just go through them one at a time they don't have to be real tight just snug them in there Remember to tighten up the bottom ones you get took out too. Last one. Okay. We're going to take our new tube, the old tube with the new gasket, right on here. We're going to put that back into the pump. What I always do is put a little dab of silicone on here also. Around the whole thing. Makes it go back into the pump a lot easier and it keeps it from leaking at all. Put it back in the way that we took it out. All right, now we're just going to catch the bolt in where the tube goes into here, and we're just going to push the tube all the way down until the bolt touches right up against the bolt, and then we're going to put our 10 millimeter back in there. Okay. Once you get the uh, once you get this clamp tight, we're going to put the uh, the hose back on to the uh, to the, to the uh, filter box and. Uh, The best way to put the belt on is while you still have your fan shroud off of the uh, off of the truck itself. So we'll put the belt in there, and we'll just follow the the routing that's right on top of the fan shroud, and then we'll get the belt on. I'll show you how it goes. Put a wrench on the tensioner, just push it in, and we can slide the belt right on the way the box. And that's pretty much how the belt goes. Now we're going to put our fan shroud in and reattach our fan, and then we'll be all set. And the way you put it in is you put the fan in as an assembly 
together with the uh, And then we just bring these two back up into here, catch our nuts on there, fill it up with antifreeze, and let it run, and then we're all set. As you can see, it's really not as bad as you would think it would be. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.